market. The big players, the big boys on the block, and and here they are. Uh, Facebook you might recognize some of these icons, and I'm sure you recognize most of these names. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and MySpace. And then just recently, we've had a new part of the uh, arena, and that's Google Plus. Now, Google Plus, you listeners may or may not be familiar with with this. It's Google's new social networking platform, and it just went public two weeks ago. So it's brand brand new, and already has 50 million users. Oh my God! It's growing, it's growing really quickly. It, it's just it, it's it's one of the it, well, it is the fastest growing uh, site on the web. Um, and people like it. It's gotten very positive reviews. Uh, is it going to replace Facebook? You know, I'm doubtful, but everything is, is just too new to tell. Um, yeah, like I say, it's gotten very good reviews, but it's, you know, Facebook has so much traction, it's going to take a little, <laughs> little effort to knock it off the block. Right. So how, how are these things all different? You know, all these different okay, sites. So yeah, and it gets it gets confusing. It's like like what's the difference between them? Which one should I use? So let, let's go through a little bit of a tour. I'll just give you a little summary of each one, um, so the listeners can can decide which ones they might want to pursue. Now, the first one I want to take a look at is MySpace, and uh, this one I, is the Titanic of the social networking sites. It's going down and it's going down fast. If you watch the um, the traffic stats on, on MySpace, uh, they, they, they're plummeting. It, it's really no longer relevant. It used to be the big competitor to Facebook. Uh, now it's used primarily by younger people and, and mostly as a sort of an entertainment uh, destination. So I wouldn't even bother uh, looking at MySpace as a marketing vehicle for your massage practice. Now the other ones we talked about, um, are LinkedIn. Now this is LinkedIn, the reason why I have this picture is because this is probably the most formal of the social networking sites. So you have to wear your best clothes. And you're laughing, but I actually owned a suit like this. The seventies were a good decade. <laughs> My first real suit was a powder blue safari suit, believe it or not. So is that you in the picture there? No. <laughs> Uh, so I love this picture. Um, so, so LinkedIn is is the formal one. So it's it's set up as a professional networking site. If you visit the site, LinkedIn.com, you'll see a, a very much a resume style interface. It's quite popular. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some numbers here so you can compare them. It has about 135 million users. So it's not a small site. It has a lot of users, and it this the users on LinkedIn probably have the highest income out of any uh, social networking uh, group or, or site. Um, they're not particularly active. There, there are a, a lot of opportunities for social engagement, um, but again, it tends to be a little bit more formal, so people don't necessarily use them as much as they would on, on other sites. Uh, but in my opinion, this has really some incredible potential from a marketing perspective. It, it, it's really untapped. Uh, it is growing. Uh, it's, it continues to grow. It has such a great demographic for massage therapists that I don't, I don't think you can ignore this one. Um, but probably what most therapists will want to start with is Facebook. And Facebook is a lot more casual than um, LinkedIn. So people are going to be a lot more comfortable using Facebook. And they probably have an account there already. Now, I actually didn't own a suit like this. I wish I did. But... Um, I didn't see those in the store. <laughs> so just to tell you a little bit about Facebook, Facebook has 800,000, sorry, 800 million users. <laughs> so that's quite a few. Uh, uh, again, these numbers boggle my mind. I, I, just, I just can't conceptualize this. And what's interesting about Facebook is it's very, very active. About half the users log in every day. And it is business friendly, so it's not just for socializing, but Facebook has set up all kinds of opportunities for businesses to um, make use of that traffic, and they have both free and paid options for reaching those, those users. 
Uh, the average user has about 130 friends, as Facebook calls them, so those are people who you're connected with on the social network site, which is significant. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But as everybody on the line knows right now, it's going through a lot of changes. So it's uh, every time I do slides for Facebook, by the time I, I do my next webinar or, or <laughs> broadcast or publish anything about Facebook, it's all changed and it's irrelevant. And I, you know, I'm always constantly trying to figure out how to use it myself with all the ongoing changes. And then the last uh, one uh, of those big ones is Twitter. And Twitter is like a party. Uh, so it's very casual. Um, it's, it's relatively big. There's 200 million users uh, and about 15 million of those log in daily. But like I say, it, it, it's, it's like a party. It's very noisy. It's hard to get the good bits of stuff. There's tons of spam on it. And the users that are on there uh, really are not particularly engaged. So, so only 10% follow more than 30 users. Um, and you can compare that to Facebook, where each user has, on average, 130 friends. So, um, uh, so, so, so Twitter is is I, I, I just compare it to a party. Lots of lots of activity, maybe nothing too substantial going on.